Uh, Representative Hur, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a couple of years since we first interviewed you. Um, and so for, for viewers who might be meeting you for the first time, uh, tell us about your background and your journey to the House. So uh, I'm a state representative in District 64A, and that's in St. Paul. And, um, you know, this journey uh, coming into this legislative role was actually quite interesting because I didn't take a traditional path. I actually have an undergraduate in finance and then I have an MBA. And I spent about 15 years in the private sector um, in doing investments in finance work uh, until I became a stay-at-home mom. And I did that until my youngest uh, went from kindergarten to um, middle school. And it was at that time that I realized that the work that I had to do to ensure that my children had uh, um, access to equitable education and opportunities, that I realized that I, the amount of work it took me to provide that for them, that I had to do that for all children. And that every child, regardless of if their parents had language barriers or if they uh, you know, were from low income communities or they were working multiple jobs that they weren't able to be there for their children, I felt like I needed to be that voice for those kiddos. And so I ran for office specifically for that reason. And so my background is very different. I did do policy work for a number of years uh, before uh, I did run for office. And so it was kind of a, a good meeting of all of my life experience along with the policy work that I had done to uh, be in this legislative role. And tell us about 64A. Uh, what, where is that in this part of the state? And um, what are some of the issues that are important to the folks there? Sure. So 64A is such an amazing district. I know I think every state rep thinks that their district is amazing. Mm -hmm. I have to say mine is really wonderful. I am right in St. Paul. Um, we would be considered south of uh, I-94, and um, I represent the neighborhoods of Crocus Hill, uh, Matt Groveland, Lexham, um, Marion Park, um, Shadows Falls, uh, the Neuer Park, and Union Park uh, districts, which lead then all the way up to the uh, Tacoma Park, uh, I mean, Tacoma Avenue, which is right by the state fairgrounds. Okay, and what sort of issues are important to the constituents there? The issues that are important to my constituents. So my constituents are very engaged and very knowledgeable. And we also know in our district that though we all face challenges and that, and that many of us still need uh, uh, resources and access to uh, information or to, um, to tools that are out there, we also know that we are doing much, much better than many Minnesotans are doing. And so my district really empowers me to fight for housing, specifically affordable housing and deeply affordable housing. They really help, uh, ask me to uh, fight for on the uh, front of uh, closing the achievement gap, you know, the healthcare issues around, uh, around um, medication uh, affordability, um, also around access uh, to healthcare, right? Those are all issues that are really important to my district, along with environmental issues. And not just doing the environmental work on protecting the environment, our water, our air, our soil, but also really looking at that work through an equity lens and who has been the most disproportionately impacted by the harms that we put into this our planet and how do we uh, rectify that situation and uh, not continue to do that to marginalized communities. Right? So that's really important to my district as well. But there's many, many more. I mean, they care about taxes. They care about you know infrastructure. There's many, many things they care about, but they're really issue based and they really want me to fight for the things that impact Minnesotans every day. And I want to ask you about this. It's it's been a couple of years. It's your second term in the House. Um, things look so much different then than they did in 2018, right? Um, what keeps you motivated? Oh, wow. You know, hearing everybody's voices keeps me motivated. You know, you know, I had the opportunity to meet with so many people in person my first term. And at the end of that first term, is, uh, you know, it was... Um, uh, I learned a lot, but I think that coming into my second term where we had to be remote, I mean, we went remote at the end of my second or first term, and then my full second term so far has been remote. And the truth is, is that I actually have been able to connect with people in ways that I might not have. Those who might not have had the ability to come to the Capitol or leave their jobs in order to meet me at certain times, that now we can just Zoom. And so what really continues to motivate me is really hearing from constituents, but also hearing from people across the state. And that the things that we experience here are not all that different than the things that our rural Minnesotan um, friends and family and, uh, you know, are experiencing there. And so really uh, being able to connect with people across the state, hearing their voices and the stories and the things that they've been experiencing and being able to lift those to lift that up has been really what has motivated me. And you're a member of the People of Color and Indigenous Caucus and the Minnesota Asian Pacific Caucus. Can you tell us about those two caucuses? Why are they needed and what issues 
the groups hope to address um, in this next session? Sure. So the People of Color and Indigenous, uh, the People of Color Indigenous Caucus, we call it the Posse Caucus, and it's an amazing group of legislators from both the House and the Senate, and it is anybody who identifies as, uh, as a person of color or as, as Indigenous. And we have more uh, of those than we've ever had. I think we're at 19. Don't quote me in the number, but we're we're it's a big number now. And we work on issues that we think that really impact our communities. And we also, um, you know, like support each other across communities, right? I think that a lot of times we are sort of taught to fight each other for resources. And the truth is, is there's enough for all of us. And so we lift up issues that impact marginalized communities. But we also fight for the resources that they want, because traditionally, uh, many organizations that represent these communities or initiatives that uh, support the uh, issues impacting these communities have not always had the um, the visibility at the state capitol. So our goal is to really ensure that that happens. Um, but also, you know, in the Minnesota Asia Pacific Caucus, you know, Minnesota has a very unique Asian population, and this is why disaggregation of data matters, but we have a large Southeast Asian population in addition to, you know, all, uh, all of our other East Asians and South Asians. But, you know, the, the primarily the largest group is the Southeast Asian and that we've had the opportunity to really connect across the Asian uh, diaspora to really understand what are the needs uh, experiencing because they are all very, very different. And so our newer immigrants from the Southeast Asian community is very different than our East Asian and South Asians. And so it has been really rewarding just to be able to connect with the different communities to say, what are the different um, issues that we need to lift up at the state capitol? And you have several uh, committee assignments, um, housing judiciary, and both tax committees. Mm -hmm. Are there anything specific or any specific uh, legislative priorities that you'd like to work on this upcoming session? Absolutely. So I uh, fight really hard for tenant protection bills and also I'm really supporting affordable housing. So I will continue uh, to carry those bills. I have a number of them right now that are still active from the first year of the biennium. So I will uh, continue to work with Chair Hausman and Vice Chair Howard to make sure that uh, those uh, you know don't get lost. Uh, because, you know, having this surplus, people think that we don't actually need to support individuals. But the truth is, is that we have are in such a terrible place with housing and naturally affordable housing and people having stable housing that what is being allocated is trying to fix uh, you know, decades of uh, lack of attention to this particular area. So, so there's much, still much for us to do. I'm also very, very focused on really looking at what does this surplus mean and what should we be doing with the surplus, and especially the, the funds that are coming from the federal government. How do we position Minnesota, not just not for uh, the times right now for what we people are thinking the funding is for, but how do we build for a future that allows all Minnesotans to really thrive? And that's really important to me, and that happens in taxes. Okay, and just finally, as we all know, Minnesota, divided government here, it's made enacting laws tough at, at times. Um, what needs to happen during the 2022 legislative session for you to call it a success? Well, for us to be able to get a, a, a for every committee to have their bill, their omnibus bill uh, passed, but I would say specifically, you know, we have, we didn't have a bonding bill last year. And I think that that's really important, especially because uh, you know, there's so much federal funds coming to help with our infrastructure, but also that, you know, we need to invest in Minnesota. We need to invest in roads and bridges and buildings and facilities in which people use. You know, I have a bill for a Keystone, um, which provides, uh, you know, food security for families that we've actually seen a huge increase in just this last fall, a 50 percent increase in the number of people coming to food shelves. And so I think that it's really important for us to, to uh, invest in the infrastructure that people need in order for them to have food stability and uh, transportation stability and uh, housing stability and all of the different ways in which people's lives intersect. We have to invest in that now. So that's what I would see as a success is a, is a bonding bill that is passed, but that every committee has their omnibus bill passed as well.